Like, I love those, like, are those, like, Egyptian-looking, like, mm -hmm. like, helmets? Yeah, so we're talking about Battlestar Galactica today, and we're talking about old Battlestar Galactica, new Battlestar Galactica, but, yeah, this is kind of cool. This is, like, one of those episodes where one of us gets to kind of introduce the other to something, so... Like, I love the old Battlestar Galactica yeah. show, so, like, this, like... And, and, I'm excited. And you said, like, you said you I've had no experience. no experience with Battlestar okay. Galactica. Like, I, I, I know of it, and, like, yeah. I know the title. I've seen it in stores. We, uh, Bill Pullman's look in Spaceballs is uh, very, very influenced by uh, Dirk Benedict. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In, yeah. Uh, in this. Mm -hmm. I think it's, like, almost a one-to-one -one look. Well, uh, yeah, like, Spaceballs is an interesting one because, like, you know, Mel Brooks has, like, this uh, molecular attention to detail in, like, his, like, Frankenstein movie, you yeah. know, because it's, like, that was something that he grew up with and loved and, and knew intimately. But I, I don't think Mel Brooks really knew the difference between Star Star <laughs> Trek and Star Wars and Battlestar yeah. Galactica. I think he was just kind of, like, he, mashing he, them all up. You're right. He probably just saw this and thought it was Star Wars. <laughs> and he's <laughs> like, hey, he's like, is that Luke or Han... And, like, the two leads in this, it, they have, like, when when the light hits it right, they either have two Lukes or two <laughs> Hans. Yeah. I can't tell yeah. if they've got, uh... It's Richard Hatch. Yeah, Richard Hatch. Not not the, the guy who won the first season of Survivor. I thought... I was like, man, I missed that. I, for a second, I was like... <laughs> wow. I'm like, that's cool. I like, I'm like, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the first season of Survivor. <laughs> yeah. Who Who pops up in the... The next one, Boston Rob. <laughs> yeah. Joe Millionaire. Joe. <laughs> Rick Rockwell. Wow, Rick Yeah, Rockwell. who wants to marry a millionaire? He's, I gotta he's in this. The dawn of thing. They're like Tiger Kings in this. Sort of yeah. like. Dirk Benedict, we know him from the A-Team, which mm -hmm. would come later. Yeah, yeah, because in, in the A-Team, in the opening credits, you see a Cylon. Yeah, when I was little, I, I would see the these, like, things, and they would get intermingled, but I, I, I didn't, until I was in, like, high school figure out like hear the word Cylon and be yeah yeah because they look like they'd be like I mean you can see why George Lucas sued the oh, production yeah. <laughs> because it's like it's like yes like if you get way into Battlestar Galactica you become very aware of the differences the storyline is very different but it's like on first blush holy yes, shit this it's is like, like yeah it's kind of like I mean look at that oh, oh my well, god well, first that looks all, great it's, <laughs> it's John Dykstra doing the special effects and John Dykstra was like a producer on this, uh, and he did the he did the visual effects for Star Wars, which is why like you know George Lucas you know to this day has not you know said a word to him. <laughs> oh no, yeah, because like yeah, he was one of the founders of ILM. Yeah, founder of ILM. Uh, George Lucas was you know severed ties with him. That's uh, I'm not sure of the time. Like I know George was not happy with the effects, uh, you know, in Star Wars, and 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 was unhappy with John Dykstra. But but I don't know it like if things got if it was like if it was like you know you're fired or i quit you know like and if it was like oh i hate you because you took the whole star wars thing and brought it you know over to your battle own. star mm -hmm. yeah that's wild that he didn't like the effects of star wars that's like yeah it's a whole it's a whole complex yeah it's a com i mean wild. You, you could say because he was picturing <laughs> Uh, the effects in episode one. That's what he was picturing, and, and you know, they, they were not that, so. They're like, what is, it's like George, well, he was definitely like, what the, I think he was like huffing gas or mm -hmm. something. Cause, yeah, he's like, the worst part of Star Wars are these special <laughs> effects. Those look like dog turds, Dykstra. That was like the other thing, like, um, Battlestar Galactica cost more than Star Wars. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, those specs look pretty sick. Oh, it's it's amazing. Like, um, yeah, it like it really like it just looks like Star Wars. And yeah, and and these guys got the Star Wars haircuts. Got the Star Wars. <laughs> and you're right. They they do like they're both kind of like half Han and half Luke. So there isn't a Han. There isn't a Luke. There's two guys that are kind of like, <laughs> like somewhere fluctuating in between. Yeah. between them. And then and it doesn't look cheap either. It looks like no. big sets and like a lot of extras. Yeah, very expensive production. Which again, like. We talked about, like, oh, why did it end? Did it end because of the lawsuit? Did it end because of this or that? It It's another one of those shows where, like, 1960s Batman, like, Knight Rider, another Glenn Larson production, where it's like, okay, this show costs a ton of money to make. Yeah, it's doing well in the ratings, but, um, you know, we could put on, you know, some comedy, you know, some sitcom with, like, you know, do just as well or maybe even do better in the ratings and... and 
and you know save millions in production costs. They're like, we can just use the sets from Three's Company. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what was beating this. Was like, <laughs> I, I forget what what it was up against, but it was like, okay, we're getting our you know like the, the rating started to take it. It, it was strong out of the gate. And then the ratings started to take a dip, and it was like, you know, it was like heart to heart or something. It was, you know, it was it killing its ass. Yeah. Uh, Robert Wagner, and then you got that, I'm Max, and I take care of it. Like, that's, that's the budget. Um, it's like a whole Star Wars universe that I completely would have, could have been indulging in. Yeah, I'm, su I'm really surprised this didn't cross your path. But, like, for me, it was like, these are like some of my earliest memories are like the Battlestar Galactica TV show. Like, like it's just like this, like, haze, but like, I remember it. And, um, and like, I loved it and it felt so important and so great. And it was like on TV and, you know, I remembered the robot dog. I don't know yeah. if you got to see the robot dog yet. No. There's like a robot dog. So like that stood out. And then there's like a cantina band where, um, it's kind of like the Supremes <laughs> right. and, and they have like six eyes oh. and like three mouths and so, like, those are, like, the, you know, so, um, those are, like, the two biggest things that stand out in my memory. And then, of course, like, the Cylons and the... Oh, whoa, whoa. yeah, I love... Glenn Larson must be really into, like, lights that go back Yeah, he forth. invested <laughs> in, like, an LED company. And, yeah, so, so it was, like, this show makes this huge impression and then goes away. And then a few years later, whoo, there's Knight Rider, and it's like, okay, this is cool. This is yeah. a, a Cylon car, you he, know? They, he killed... Battlestar Galactica just to resurrect <laughs> the light. He's like, you know, he yeah, he's got his he's like baggage. I tricks. like where his head is at. Yeah, my mom and dad never talked about Battlestar. They like they were you know showed Star Wars. Yeah, and I never saw it on television. Well, I mean, Battlestar it would have been kind of tricky because it kind of made a big splash and then went away, and it had like a second life in like the booming VHS market of the eighties. After the show went away, um, you know, you know, you could like rent. Uh, the Battlestar Galactica, the movie, which was like, um, Glenn Larson, like, when they made this thing, it was like, hey, we got something kind of cool on our hands. So I think they, like, edited it, uh, like, it was the, a made for TV movie. Okay. That was gonna become a series, but it was a made for TV movie. And then they created, like, a theatrical cut that aired in other countries. I don't know that it ever aired in the US, but it aired in, like, wow. you know, Europe and Asia and stuff. And was, like, kind of a hit movie, you know, following, like, right on the heels of Star Wars and Star Wars Mania. And so then they did the same thing uh, when, like, around the same time Glenn Larson did the Buck Rogers TV show. Again, oh, yeah. it, it's so it's so hilarious that these are all coming out of the same, <laughs> oh, uh, same. The same pipeline, you know? We're Glenn Larson heads yeah. over here. We're going to be able to do the Glenn Larson super cut. Whoa, and, and, I like, can't wait, know. BJ and the Bear. But, like, look at some of these effects. Like, compare these effects to Star Wars, like, John Dykstra has, you know, like, you know, the, the, the learning oh. curve and stuff is behind him on Star Wars, so now he's coming into this, and like, you know. I'm gonna this. be be straight here. <laughs> Some of these models look even better yeah. than, like. No, they do, like, it, it, you can't help it, and there's like look a. Look at that. <laughs> there's like a spaceship launching sequence that they keep doing, where it's like, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, I don't remember anything <laughs> like that in Star Wars. With the Cylons, I think in uh, the Star Wars, um, the new trilogy, yeah. Captain Phasma, like, it's like a back, coming back around again, like the, like a Cylon troop, like a, yeah. it's a silver stormtrooper, they're like. Well, I, one of the things, because it is kind of weird, because like Star Wars is so original, and then everything rips it off, but then it's like there does kind of become a haze of like, you know, of like, so, so then there's like elements a battle star that end up showing up in like later <laughs> Star Wars things, and so the kids who grew up with this stuff and then went on to like work at ILM. Um, there's Jane Seymour, Doctor Quinn, medicine woman. She, this was oh, like wow. you know one of her early roles. She was a Bond. Which Bond? I can't remember which. Yeah, um, her story's interesting. There's like there's like some trivia about her in this show, but the spaceships kind of like launch out of the side yeah. of like the big spaceship, and you know that got put into what's it called the last jedi oh you know? yeah i remember like uh, kylo ren like blows up oh yeah one of those you know 
Jane Seymour had like a signature necklace from some like like line, okay? And it was like the open heart necklace. But I was like joking around like, look at giant penis. <laughs> okay. It was like <laughs> the, the the filleted filleted uh, phallus filleted necklace. Phallus. The Zales signature filleted phallus. I think she got some of her jewelry ideas from like the jewelry in uh, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> so the story itself is kind of cool. Like it like that's that's where the Star Wars comparison kind of breaks down because, you know, some of this stuff is kind of like leaden and plodding and, you know, and, and uh, stiff in a way that Star Wars was kind of like fun. And, yeah. You know, but it's not bad. Like, like, especially like compared to like TV of the time. It's like, can, can you believe like, wait, we're getting this on TV? Like, yeah. like on, on the next channel is like eight is enough, you know? <laughs> the golden age, like... Like, this is Golden Age, like, and also, this might be the best way for, to watch it. I don't want to hear what their dialogue or what they're saying. Yeah. It's like, we could just... <laughs> yeah, it is like, um, but I mean, the, the the first couple episodes are, are not are not bad at all. Like, I mean, they're just so much fun. And yeah, for, for me, I, I guess I was like one or two, you know, when I, when, you know, seeing this as a kid. And so it was just like, it, like, it just seemed like this profound thing and this wonderful thing. And then, you know, it, it was like, I've kind of had a journey with this show because I'd have my memories of it and then I'd kind of like read about it and stuff. But then, um, you know, and, and then like revisiting it when I was like maybe in high school when, yeah. when I got like my own video rental Oh, those card, are great. You know, I and, still have my old cards. Yeah, uh, we had um, Tower Video, we had oh, Arrows. Right. Um, but yeah, like, so I had uh, West Coast Video. Um, so like it would be that and then revisiting it and being like oh wow this isn't as you know good as I remember it like you know because I'm I'm imagining like Empire Strikes Back level of like you know drama and stuff and and then you see it and it's like uh, and then some time goes by and then it's like you get over that and then it's like oh no this is actually like really cool on its own terms you know I'm excited there's 24 episodes total there's 24 episodes and there's ups and downs like it it gets kind of cool and then it gets kind of not cool and then it gets cool cool again and um it's just so much fun and then even even in like an episode kind of like a stinker you just you, you, the set I love are it. so I love sumptuous it. The, that whole room where like everything's just bathed in oh, red, red and the spaceships and the, and the space battles it's just so wait, much fun wait a second this is from 78 mm -hmm. this is pre empire strikes yeah. back they they got that like the vibe of like cloud. This has a cloud city. This first one with like yeah. the clouds and like the uh, just the red vibe. Well, and also like the um, just the impending doom of it also because like um, you know Empire Strikes Back. The whole thing is just like the Empire is like hot on their heels and there's there's no rest for the weary and all this. And that's like that's the that's the tone of this show. And then especially these first. Uh, uh, you know, two episodes where, like, you know, the world's getting, uh, you know, blown up. Basically, like their their uh, their space colonies are getting blown up, and uh, you know, by the Cylons. And, are know. the Cylons? They're they're the uh, like the enemy in this. They're the enemy. They're the robots. And again, like, it, there's like a line in this where, you know, he's where like uh, the the little boy Boxy is is talking to um, Apollo, who's like his you know, stepfather, and he's like, the Cylons, like, what, what's the story behind the Cylons? And he's like, they're, you know, long ago, th they were this reptilian race that we were at war with. And then, um, and they had this, like, servant, this servant race of robots that they built these, like, robots to, to serve them and to fight for them. But then the robots turned on them and eradicated these, like, reptilian aliens. But now we still call those robots who've taken over, we still call them the Cylons, you know? And so, and I, like, my mind was that's blown. So and that cool. just, like, kind of stuck with great. me. That's you know? great. That's great. You know, you'd watch the show as a kid, and then maybe you'd see it in rerun, maybe you'd never see it again. And then it was, like, a couple years, you know, you know before you'd, you'd, you know, maybe... Like, I, again, I was in, like, the, the VHS version came out, like, maybe, like, 85, 86, or whatever, a couple... Which, you know, as a little kid, that's, like, eons later... Uh, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't check it out till I was in high school. Or, so I'm walking around with these memories. And then the other way we'd interact is like we had some of the toys. So we had like a Cylon. Um, we had the. Um, it's he's called Imperious Leader, and he's kind of like the Emperor, and he's like very obviously this like reptilian creature. 
But I guess in the show, they kind of like changed the story around a little bit to make it where like those those reptiles those reptiles were like completely eliminated. So they in the story they say that he's a robot, and you never get a good look at him in 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 the show. But if you look at the toy, he's clearly like this reptilian alien. There's nothing robotic about him. Like my cousins had Star Wars toys, mm -hmm. so I would play when I would go to their house. They had of like, remember like the Darth Vader like op you would open. Yeah, them up yeah, the case. the case. Yeah, they also had like a C three PO one of that. <sighs> they had one of those too, and like all my cousins had them. So I would like I would get them from multiple angles, but none of them had any like Battlestar stuff. Okay, I remember going to a birthday party. At McDonald's when I was a kid. Oh my gosh! And like, yes. first first of all, jealous that because I never had a, a McDonald's birthday party. I was so jealous of that to begin with. And then my mom bought that Star Wars carrying case, you know, as the gift. I'm like, mom, can we have this? <laughs> like, uh, you, you never bought me this, uh, you know. So I had to like hand over <laughs> this Darth Vader Star Wars carrying case to the, like I I to this day have never had the Darth Vader Star Wars carrying I know case. What you but mean. can you imagine? Like that's like I think of like. Uh, the movie Mommy Dearest, when, like, uh, her daughter has her birthday party and she gets, like, a million gifts. And then she's like, you're keeping one of them and the rest are going to charity. <laughs> oh, my God. I was in elementary school. I went to this kid Landon's uh, McDonald's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And I th threw up at it. Awesome. And I had to yeah. be, like, As like, one does. <laughs> it was, I remember I was wearing, I remember every detail of it, like, uh, I was wearing an Alf Junk for Joy sweater, <laughs> uh, uh. and I got him a Police Academy action figure mm -hmm. from Kenner. Uh -huh. I think it was Sweet Chuck. Sweet Chuck, oh, that's a Hiding good in the fire uh, hydrant, and then I was like... They were probably all out of Mahoney's, and like, the Sweet <laughs> Chuck was all there was. <laughs> the Sweet Chuck was the only one there was, and uh, yeah, I remember I, I, I like... Uh, I did a huge barf and, and then ruined the party and had to get, but, the, but that, that wasn't the, I think that, I was, now, like, uh, Lauren Green in this, like, I don't know, like, maybe some people think of him and they think of Bonanza, but this is all I, th like, I think of him as, like, the Battlestar Galactica guy. Yeah, yeah. I've only, I kind of, I've seen the, there's Lon or, or Hugh. <laughs> He's like, now, we've talked about. I forget who it was, but we talked about people who, who like, have, like, the Hollywood tan, and they look like they're made out of Play-Doh, and, like, um, you know, Richard Hatch. <laughs> he's, got he looks like, <laughs> he's got a ferocious tan. He's got a ferocious tan. And he just, yeah, looks, look, you know, uh, glistening under the hot lights. Yeah, he's got uh, pancake makeup on. Yeah, lo looks looks like he's made out of Play-Doh, and, and then that, that hair that looks like it was just, like, <laughs> dropped on his head. That is... Wow, you think like if he was on a storm grate, it would do like the Marilyn Monroe thing? <laughs> <Yeah. blow up. laughs> now, like so, so like as a kid, sort of growing up in this era, you did get the sense of like, oh yeah, like science fiction. One of the elements of the sci-fi genre is kind of like blow-dried <laughs> hair, you know, this oh, like yeah. uh, uh, what's it, shampoo, like uh, Warren Beatty. Warren it's like Beatty. Warren Beatty. Oh yeah, you know, what that, a helmet! That's that's part of the <laughs> sci-fi genre. It's robots, uh, laser guns, rocket ships, and <laughs> you know, quaffs. His like you get like a dawn post mask of Richard Hatch's face. <laughs> he looks like. You know, Tom Cruise, right in Mission Impossible, right before he goes like this, like where you cut away from like the actor's actual face of like the actor who's playing this, disc, and then you, and then you cut back and it's like, that's Richard Hatch. Like these hairstyles from the seventies, you still see people with them. Like, there, there's that uh, the Tuesdays with Maury guy, <laughs> Mitch <laughs> album. <laughs> I would see him on like the McLaughlin group or like or like Charlie Rose and his hair is a one to one facsimile of like he's got the puff over his well, ears. You, you know who uh looks like they, they played a you know, one of the one of the Battlestar Galactica pilots is uh Ken Burns. Ken Burns I think he was like one of the guys in the background, you know, running <laughs> running to to his uh, Starfighter, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> When no, I him and John Mellon camp. Oh well, no! Uh, one of one of the Battlestar Galactica guys is Rick Springfield. I wish what? that I had and Jesse's girl. girl. He's um, he plays Zach. He's like right at the beginning of this, and oh, he's right. Apollo's little brother who like dies in combat, and then like you know Apollo you know spends the rest of his life kind of like you know trying to get over like the death of his brother, and it kind of like brings him and Adama together, you know, and, and but yeah, Rick Springfield what? plays his brother. I didn't, I, 
I, I didn't re- I didn't know that until like I was a teenager watching this on VHS because it was like because when I was a little kid, I'm sure I was like just running in and out of the room doing whatever yeah. when this was on. So I don't remember that. I don't remember Zach, you know, as a character. I was with Rick Springfield. It would always be like, do you know he was on General Hospital <laughs> or like he was yeah. like, but I'm like, wow, you can be an actor and a musician. <laughs> Look how cool these spaceships awesome. are. These robots, you know, the, the Cylons, they attack all the... And again, like, most people are probably familiar with this from, like, the, the reboot of, like, the early 2000s. Yeah. You know, where, again, like, um, that show is, like, a masterpiece. Like, I love the wow. new Battlestar Galactica. Like, this holds a special place in my heart. It's kind of... Um, you know, just the nostalgia, the gloss. But then also, just, like, those 70s productions. Oh, love and, like, it. Um, the the sort of filters that they put on the camera, where like Juicy. those those uh, like shimmering shines that are coming off the Cylon armor, they make these like little plus signs. <laughs> plus signs, you know, I love them. Um, you know, that's like, the stuff. All that stuff's so great. Yeah. So like the 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 new one, I call it new, but meanwhile it's like twenty t- two twenty years, years ago. ago. Um, the new one had like had what this one was lacking. It had like amazing, incredible stories. Uh, characters that you could connect to, like a real visceral quality. But then it had sort of, you know, CGI. The space battles were, were pretty cool, but it had like, you know, kind of standard CGI for the for the silence where like you wanted to see like guys in costumes, you know. I got a feeling, Tom, I'm going to fucking be on. Yeah. Like this, inject this shit right, right. into my veins. If, like... if you could somehow just like fuse those two shows together, you'd have like the perfect, the perfect show. show. Th- those like suede jackets that the pilots have. For the character of Adama, the character that um, Lauren Green plays, like I know they had a hard time convincing Edward James Olmos to play that character because he's like, I did Blade Runner. It's, you know, the greatest science fiction thing ever made. There's no point for me to ever do another kind of science fiction thing. Uh, you know, but then they kind of sold him on it and said, it's going to it's gonna be in that same spirit. You're not going to see, there's going to be nothing ridiculous. It's going to be very, you know, you know, convincing or whatever. And so I think... There was probably a similar thing with Lauren Green getting him involved, where it's like, I don't understand it. What is this <laughs> bullshit? And then they're like, look, it's stagecoach, but in space. space. And he's like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All I'm right. Board, what, you know? what, what was this show that he... Uh, how long have you been standing there? <laughs> <laughs> or she's like there, and then you hear it. He's like, I didn't know they had that snake cam technology. Yeah, like... Um, that is Lone Star from yeah, from Spaceballs. Totally. This is kind of like like Star Wars. We've talked about it before. Star Wars is like very asexual. Yeah. This is this is like it's like hey, this is the seventies. The swing and the swing is <laughs> like where's you know? And so this Battlestar Galactica has like the sex. It, it has like the sex <laughs> appeal <laughs> too faced. <laughs> you know, Dirk Benedict he, has Dirk his Benedict. cigar, and then it goes. What? <laughs> you know, he has his... Did somebody say Dirk Benedict fucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dirk Benedict fucks. Uh, uh, Luke Skywalker does not. Uh, you know, and as as we've sort of seen play out as as yeah. the series like reached reached a conclusion, For, like before when he's in his trailer, he's stuffing like a sock yeah. in his pants. And also, he's... Dirk Dirk Benedict's character he's called Starbuck, and yeah. you know, and it's like. Oh, is this <laughs> you know, now? Now, Star, like I, I mean, Starbucks coffee predates this, but like I never heard of Starbucks. Yeah, uh, except for this guy, you know, the until, original like, Starbucks. You know, maybe the '90s is when I started hearing about Starbucks coffee. He's like, there was a deleted so, line when he's like, Starbucks, Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> they like, and his character, he's always like scheming. He's always trying to trying to like. You know, come up with some like get rich quick scheme. He, he's a Sergeant Bilko. You know, like it's TV, so they're like, what? You know, so he's Sergeant Bilko, and so yeah, one of his things is like, oh, we get these beans, we uh, grind them up, we uh, pour hot water <laughs> over them. He's like, uh, then we're gonna sell them, and he has a little stand on the ship. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's outside the ship on a ladder, mm-hmm. like jumping, it's like a blue balls scene <laughs> coming up in this where like. He's like, you know, having some like romantic moment, and then like uh, Athena is watching him have this romantic moment with this other woman on the ship, 
and she's like at a control panel and then she like presses the button to shoot like dry ice or, or like a freeze ray or yeah. like, oh, you know. <laughs> it's like the cold, he gets the cold shower treatment. I mean, you watched the the, the newer Battlestar Galactica, right? Or I've you've not, never, oh, you've never, because I was gonna Battle say like, Storm. watching this, like maybe you're seeing some like themes come together. Cause it like, that, I mean, we, we gotta do a separate episode about the new Battlestar Galactica, but like, I love seeing the mat lines around the spaceships. Yes. So, like they look almost like they're, it's their force field force or field. something. Love that. Um, but like, it's like amazing how they went to this like source material. Uh, Ronald A. Moore, how he like went to this source material and what he managed to create to create something like very relevant um, out of this. And, and like when you know both shows, it's like kind of amazing when you see little like callbacks like, oh, there's that. There's, you know. When you we were um, watching the um, Bob, or Mandalorian or Boba Fett, you had mentioned Katie Sackhoff. Yeah. Is she on the... Yeah, so she plays Starbuck in what? the That's new cool. one like when i was hearing about the new um battlestar galactica and like oh there's a love triangle between starbuck apollo and baltar it's like <laughs> okay this, this new one sounds pretty interesting okay they're like, taking some, they're taking some chances chance. pretty cool sounds cool sounds cool you know and this is like one of the early episodes of 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 the new one where it's like you know everybody's on spaceships and they're all starving and they're you know there might be a mutiny uh, because the people are just living in such desperate conditions. You know, it's like a refugee ship. Look at this set. Yeah, amazing set. This is all part of the first, like, two episodes. It's like this amazing two-parter. And that was the thing I wanted to talk about with, like, Jane Seymour. She signed on for this as, like, a one-shot, as, like, a TV movie. And her character was supposed to die. Like, all through this, she's supposed to have this, like, terminal illness. And, and then it's supposed to be, like, uh, you know, Ryan O'Neill in Love Story or yeah. something. It, like, you know, like, she's supposed to, like, die by the end of it. And, um, th like, they get married and then she dies. And, and um, Apollo, you know, becomes, you know, the stepfather of her son. And, like, she was supposed to have this whole arc. And she said um, they wanted her to be, to, like, sign up, like, to be a regular on the show. And um, so, you, you, like, they decided, okay, it's not going to be a movie. It's actually going to be, you know, like a TV movie that starts off a series, and we want you for the series. So um, they edited out all of her, like, <coughs> oh like, like, there's all these scenes that, like, end just before, like, the part where she's like, oh, I got bad news from the oh, doctor, Lord. or this and that, like, um, you know, and... and that's great. That, like, that, that, that was what's, that's what got her interested in... In battles, in doing Battlestar Galactica, was that sort of arc and and that thing of like you know dealing with a terminal illness that, and and that was all completely erased. That's interesting though. Yeah, she's like two sides of the coin. She's like, I'm inter this like it's very artistic and I'm yeah. very it's invested in this and it gets to do like you know so, some like good great acting. acting. And stuff. But then it's like, well, we're removing that, but you're gonna get on. You're, you're gonna yeah, do twenty four episodes. And, and she <laughs> didn't want to like she just wanted to do the one shot because she didn't want to get sort of caught up to be continued. She didn't want to get right. caught up in like TV. She wanted to like do movies and stuff. And like she did, you know, she was in uh, Somewhere in Time. Or not, oh, yeah, Somewhere not in Time. McDowell. No, that's uh, Time After Time. Time After Time. We got to do a time. She was in Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve. Whoa. Uh, there was one of those 80s James Bonds, not uh, A View to the Kill, to a Kill, not the one with Christopher Walken <laughs> and uh, Duran Duran soundtrack. Max Shrek or Max mm -hmm. Zorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. Uh, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Why are you dressed up like Batman? In the credits, they keep saying Ed Bagley Jr. as Ensign Greenbean. I don't remember seeing Ed Begley Jr. Yeah. once in this. So maybe he was part of those uh, scenes that, of, uh, you know, maybe maybe Ensign Greenbean is like, uh, uh, you know, uh, oh, Jane Seymour, I, I, I heard you're, uh, you know, I heard you're sick. What's going on? What's this I hear about? He, he's in every one of her cough scenes. Yeah. Ensign Greenbean, they call him that. He has like a real small, thin <laughs> dick. <laughs> That's like they cut that out. Jane Seymour since then, she felt like this was just some kind of like cheesy TV thing she did, and like, and it left a bad taste in her mouth that they like edited. So, she, but then like, you know, she ends up on that you know Comic Con circuit oh, and realizes yeah. that like, oh, you know, there's people, people you know, and and she does stand out, and she's in. I think she's in like four episodes, and then she's gone, and it's it's like she's definitely missed. You know, like yeah. she's definitely like a, a great presence in it. Uh, maybe that's why the ratings took a dip. Is, oh, uh, for the, her absence. Um, 
but yeah, yeah, she was pretty <sighs> great in it. Um, those helmets are amazing. Yeah, I'm all in on those. Yeah, like Egi- like Egi- that Egyptian Egi- motif. Because so that's the other thing. Like for Star Wars, it's like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and like I spent my whole life like, what's that mean? <laughs> oh my, you know, um, is it millions of years ago? Is it the fifties? Is it you know like like what you know, uh, you know just kind of and and I I don't know. I guess they kind of maybe took that for this where it's like you don't know. If the, like okay, that's we're trying to do a, a Star Wars for TV. That's one of the elements. Is this the future? Is this the past? Uh, we don't know. And 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 so that that was kind of like a question that hung over this. Is like okay, is this like a Chariots of the Gods? Um, you know, like a Jack Kirby kind of thing where it's like all these things that are happening in outer space are like the backstory of life on Earth. And so it's like all these stories you hear about, uh, you know, Moses or about, uh, you know, King Arthur or about, you know, what, you know, whatever it's like, or, or, or the, uh, more, more specifically the Greek gods, it's like, oh, all this stuff actually happened in space, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and now they're coming to earth. And, and, um, and so that Egyptian stuff is like, oh, these are, this is like, everything has this Egyptian motif and then they're going to come to earth because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for this planet called Earth. <laughs> they're going to come there, and then they're going to build the pyramids. That you know, the yes. chariots of the gods. That's how the pyramids got it got built by these guys. And so, uh, you know, the the uh, you know the what you'd see on a sarcophagus, the art on a sarcophagus is like just a depiction of these like space faring guys and stuff. Like I love how they have the little light above it too. Mm-hmm. And so you don't you don't know for sure, like what. Jane Seymour as Serena. So you d- and I love the theme song. <laughs> and it's like it's composed by Stu Phillips and the Los Angeles uh, Orchestra. These credits. Yeah, the credits are great. They're like those uh, you know Superman the movie kind of uh, credits where it's like you know, but it gets you in the mood like <laughs> this like kind of like slow romantic march kind of thing. And it is like. Okay, that's the other thing to check oh, off the no, list. I forgot. You know, we got the, <laughs> the John score. Williams style. Like, if they did hire John Williams, that would have been amazing. <laughs> I mean, George Lucas just wouldn't wouldn't talk to John Williams ever again. Like, I'm not like, talking to this guy. Yeah, anymore. he wouldn't have been in Empire Strikes, but we would have had no Imperial March because he'd be <laughs> he'd be like, uh, yeah, go go suck go John Dykstra's dick. The thing that stinks the most about Star Wars is the special effects <laughs> and the music and the music. What a what a turd you like, John Williams. And then the like the later episodes. Um, after the first couple episodes, the the opening credits has like kind of like just like scenes from like you know all the different things that have happened with that march music going and oh maybe the Toltecs <laughs> or the Egyptians ancient species of man or the Toltecs or perhaps somewhere <laughs> beyond love- the space. <laughs> it's, that's uh, Patrick McNee, uh, John Steed from the Avengers. Avengers, yeah, who he shows up later on. As Count Ibli, he's uh, he's kind of like the Satan figure of of the Battlestar mythology. He's What's his the Count Count Iblis or Ibli or Iblis I B L I S. All in on Battlestar. Yeah, yeah, like how fun is it? So like, yeah, I saw it when I was two and was just like, you know, just dazzled and blown away. They kind of tease like, oh, is this the distant past? And they've they've answered the question a number of different ways. So like when it came out. In the in the theatrical, I think it was like the theatrical release. Um, they do a couple things that are different. They like kill off, you know, um, Baltar in 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 the theatrical release cut, and then in this they don't. They keep him alive as like an on. He's he's like the traitor. He's the Judas of of this story. Um, and then, uh, so, but like I think in the theatrical version they kind of answer it, and like they have like, you know, the astronauts on the moon or whatever, you know. Showing, showing up, seeing, you know, like space. I, for, I forget exactly what. And then, you know, but then in the series, it's kind of left up in the air. Is this the past? Is this the future? What is this? And then, um, like, the final episode, they get, like, a transmission from, like, a satellite, and it's, like, you know, JFK saying, like, you know, it been I be leaner. It's, like, something like that. I forget exactly. Oh, my God. It's like, so then it's, like, okay, so this is taking place, you know, after the 60s or whatever. And then... Um, uh, so that's like the final episode, which which probably not too many people saw because by that point, you know, the bloom was off the rose, and then the show gets canceled, 
everybody else makes other plans. Yeah. And then, you know, in some like kind of last minute thing, they're like, we're bringing it back. Oh, uh, shit. At a decimated budget. Uh, we're bringing back Battlestar 1980. Is what I didn't. We're gonna even, call. I didn't. I never heard. Of yeah, that's a, wait, that's what? that's kind of the season two of this. Is called Battlestar 1980, and um, nobody wanted to come back because it was like just the shit production. <laughs> you know, it was. And and what it basically was was like, okay, they made it to Earth, and it's now. You know, it's 1980, <laughs> and Gosh. they're on Earth, and they get into wacky adventures. <laughs> And <laughs> there's like a lot of slide whistles. Oh, shit. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is kind of like uh, I'm kind of uh, excited to watch this. Yeah, Battle, Battlestar 1980. So Battlestar 1980 comes out, and it's like, and also they had changed some of the TV regulations. So it was like, since it was on at like eight o'clock, it had to be geared more towards kids. So then it got extra wacky. There was like oh, a lot of like shit. baseball oh. and like like bad news bears kind of oh, antics. Oh shit! Uh, kids <laughs> with psychic powers making making like the baseball go woo. Okay, a lot I'm of all in on Battlestar. <laughs> and and then there was, there was <laughs> even like a time travel element uh, added to it. And so, oh, yeah. But like, um, Lauren Green was in it and he had a beard. And then I love it. there was no Starbuck, no Apollo. Like none of those guys came back for it. Um, and instead it was supposed to be like their sons or something. And um, I, somebody, it was like Coy somebody. And Lance. Yeah, it was Coy and Vance. <laughs> yes. It was Coy and Vance uh, <laughs> Starbuck and Coy, and, and Coy Starbuck and Vance <laughs> Apollo. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was like somebody famous played, or like, or the son of somebody famous played one one of them. I, f I forget who, but um, and then uh, you know that that lasted a season and then got canceled because it was just ridiculous. But there's like one good episode called like the Return of Starbuck, where it I, and I think it's like the last episode where they took like some old some like unused footage from like the good Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> and then maybe they 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 got you know, Dirk Benedict for a day or something and shot some scenes of like, okay, this is what he's been up to. And, uh, and, and, and that, you know, b became kind of like this nice little tease, kind of like the best episode of, of that Galactica 1980 series. We, yeah. Like, uh, it'd be a good, um, double feature with Knight Rider 2000. Yeah. yeah. Like with all of this stuff, it's like, you know, like I've been watching those Batman from the sixties and you watch it kind of fizzle out. Like it's, it's, it's good up until the end, but you can tell there's, n you know, they they're kind of losing their way in the last season. Like adding Batgirl was a nice addition, but like the the rest of it isn't kind of firing. And so then it's like, man, we'd love to keep you around, Batman, but you're gone. <laughs> and then it's the same with this. It's like, uh, you know, like what might have been if this kind of kept going? Well, yeah, it's it's more hours than you know the the original Star Wars trilogy or whatever. It you is. Know. It's it's probably more hours than all three trilogies put together. Uh, that's just the power of TV. You you can get Star Wars in your home. It's called Battlestar Galactica whoa, 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 whoa. for free. Every, you know, every Sunday night. But yeah, it was like huge. There was like Battlestar Mania, and like just it was just like everywhere when I was a kid. Everybody was super into it. And then it's like, okay, what's next? Yeah, my cousins never had any Battlestar toys, and and my I don't, my mom never like I don't I guess she wasn't watching it or yeah we had like the little robot dog toy uh, called um, uh, what's what's it uh, Muffet. Also called Muffy. We had the we had the Cylon. We had oh, and we had the the four armed bug monster. There's this like, there's this like the second part of of the opening movie gets like real seventies and real ridiculous. That's where it has like the Cantina band, and um, and it has these like bugs that live underneath the Cantina. So like the Cantina is there to kind of get people to let their guard down, and then these like bugs can kind of like. Harvest them, kind of like you know the movie Aliens, like this oh, that kind of you know bugs who that's uh, cool. put put humans in, in like a sort of freezer to, to to eat later. I want that jacket stat, by the way. Well, that was another thing. Like when I was a kid, if you'd like read like Star Log or some of those magazines, there'd always be like an ad in there to get the Battlestar Galactica jackets, and they'd show like what? mom, dad, and son and daughter <laughs> all wearing their Battlestar Galactica <laughs> suede jackets. I remember seeing like. Yeah. Yeah, I love the unreasonable ads, too. There'd be, like, one, it's, like, you turn the page, and it, it's, like, $4,000 for a Gamorrean guard, like, <laughs> life-size bust or whatever. Or, like, a six-foot Gamorrean guard. There's, uh, there's a, a girl in here who looks just like Carrie Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay, we need a Carrie Fisher look-alike. <laughs> They're like... We, you look like Han, you look like Harrison Ford if he was put in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> the wax crayon uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, you put your Harrison Ford action, action figure in the microwave. You get this guy's guy. <laughs>
but it is kind of like um, it is kind of like, hey, you know, I'll I'll take. You know the uh, you know the poor man's Han Solo oh, over no yeah. Han Solo, and it's like as a kid, it's like Star Wars, and it's like you're waiting for the next Star Wars movie, and here's this, you know. That's so that's so right. Like, yeah, Star Wars is out. Empire's not. How are you gonna get your Star Wars fix? Yeah, and then this kind of stuff kind of just goes. Away. It all like it's so weird uh, living through these like these like fevers or or whatever you know these mania you know you know bat mania this and that because like you're a kid and you're like keep it coming i love this but then you don't realize you're living through like a bubble or something you know yeah. and then it's over and it's like wait so there's like this drought of like okay they're done making star wars movies uh okay you can watch the last starfighter okay that's done and now there's like nothing it was kind of the same thing with like barbarian stuff it's like yes. okay i guess the barbarian thing came and went and then it's like you know but remember yeah we were talking with like all, it's like the eight, the summers in those in the eighties. It's like these every summer from here on out is going to be pumping out these films. Yeah, you're going to see a, a Star Wars every couple of years. You're going to see a Star Wars. You know, you're going to see a bunch of barbarian movies. You're going to see you know, and and it's like no, this was like the peak. It was like you know, eighty two, eighty three, and then it kind you kind of see you know, like uh, RoboCop was like the last hurrah. RoboCop was like. Okay, you know, here's like an R-rated sci-fi thing. Can't wait till we do our Robocop yeah. episode. Uh, Your Schwartz is bigger yeah. than mine. <laughs> yeah, so K Katie Sackhoff plays... And, and it is kind of funny because it's like, you know, the hair. and so It's like... That hair, is that a John Peters special? <laughs> 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 Holy shit, I, I thought it was Cousin It for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's like uh, the Beatles, basically. It's like Beatles hair. You know, Beatles mania is, is still kind of. He's all hair. Like, we need to get this. They're like they parted so we can see his his mug. It's so great, like watching the new one because you see like Katie Sackhoff kind of captures his spirit. She's smoking a stogie. She's like cheating at cards and stuff, and like re ready to like punch somebody oh, out. Oh, you know, Bonanza. Bonanza yeah. He's like, this is just like cowboys in space. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> the ship. Consider it the Conestoga wagon or something. He's like, yeah, this this is uh, stagecoach. Stage and you're coach. John Wayne. For a second, I thought that was Carl Reiner. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this Mel Brooks connection is getting too real here. Yeah, it is like you know I can see like George <laughs> Lucas's point of view where it's like they're watering down my brand. It's like, and and, and then it's like you know uh, the you know the kid dies from uh, choking on a Battlestar Galactica toy. And then, like, news outlets are saying that he, you know, choked on a Star Wars toy. and So, so it's like, oh, man, you're, 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 you know, you're killing me here. And then, like, I, I recently saw, like, some of the elements of the lawsuit. Wow. And it's like, one of them is, like, funky spaceships. <laughs> like, oh, like because they have to list, like, all the things that they felt that Battlestar, that George Lucas felt Battlestar Galactica was stealing from Star Wars. And it was like, funky spaceships. Uh, you know, like like spaceships that look dirty and gritty and stuff. Uh, you know, all these all like the things little, I like, love. Yeah, uh, <laughs> blow dried hair, blow dried hair, <laughs> feathered hair. Uh, these guys spent hours in the tanning booth, <laughs> yeah. both Dirk and this guy. Yeah, Richard Hatch, like he could not let this show go. Like he kind of like this was like the greatest moment of his life. So he kind of spent the rest of his life trying to get a, a Battlestar reboot going, and he even like you know took money out of his own pocket to make. A, uh, like a sizzle reel oh, or, wow. or like a trailer for like you know it was going to be like this new Battlestar in the 90s where it was going to be uh, like he would be in the Adama role kind of like like it's like he's um, graduate you know uh, you know Lauren Green's dead and, and now he's uh, you know ascended and, and he's got more of a supporting you know he's got you know that kind of like gravitas kind of role and stuff and it looked pretty cool it just like never ended up happening oh, no. uh, and then and then you know after he probably like you know gave up or, or whatever, uh, then they had like the Ronald Moore one in like the early two thousands, and then Ronald Moore eventually put him in it. Oh, that's in great. like a major role. Like he had oh, this like sort that's of main, awesome. and, and it was kind of like a delicious role too because he was kind of like great. this like spoiler character. Like anytime things were going good, this guy would show up to kind of like mess everything up. Man, and, that's that, yeah. that that makes me feel good. That's and nice. he, he that's plays awesome. the heel for sure. Oh, and, and he gets to have good. kind of a journey too. You yeah, know, like he kind of he comes around and that's great of Ron Moore to do that. Yeah, it it you know I'm sure it made I, all the difference. You know, kind of made up for all the kind of lost uh, time with that time, the yeah. character. Oh, look at that! That's delicious <laughs> lettuce there. <laughs> Holy shit! 
I thought for a second I was like, is that like the main of a of a Clydesdale or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. The sh- I mean, the show just looks so good, and they did such a great job of like approximating Star Wars. And like, you know, you think of shows like speaking of Ron Moore, you'd have like Star Trek: The Next Generation or whatever. Yeah, everything just looked a little too cheap. It's like. Um, you know, if they would have just saved the sets from this and been like, we'll use these somewhere. We'll yes. use these for something. Like, yes. let's let's just keep these as like our you know space opera oh, sets yeah. that we we'll use for whatever you know. And then when it, whenever you know they end up oh. making like Star Trek: Next Generation, they you know wheel this out. I um for the our Recallies uh, episode, I know that they're they're coming up. We've been hearing a lot yeah. of rumblings about the Recallies. A lot of uh, buzz. Buzz. Um, I have a. Uh, this blue jacket with patches, and I'm, I have a turtle, turtleneck, <laughs> big thick turtleneck. That's probably why everybody looks so like sweaty and glistening in this. Is probably like all these layers, these thick. Because he has this like quilted shirt underneath oh, yeah. that suede jacket. I'm surprised they're like in outer space. He doesn't have his shirt unbuttoned down to his the start of his belly button, <laughs> like David has. Yeah. They're like. We should. We don't even. We're saving them some money, not even putting buttons on these for the bottom two. Yeah, like watching. Uh, you know, David Hasselhoff could have easily, but like, you know, if if this kept going, you know, it's like it's like season four of Battlestar Galactica. You know, you got this new hotshot pilot played by David Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. It was like, you know, like, in, you know, as as the eighties rolled on, and like there'd be battle, there'd be like um, Knight Rider. It'd be like, okay, I like this show. But I wish it was Battlestar Galactica. I like that, but I wish this was like on another planet. And they should have did. did um, I, I didn't remember in any of the episodes for for Knight Rider. Was there ever a Cylon cameo in it? Like I know, not, not that I recall. I mean, that that would make sense. I, I think there might have been some uh, Cylons or something in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm remembering oh, yeah. when they're on the like movie set. <laughs> Page is and <laughs> also like when you see something that is like like a cousin to Star Wars. It's kind of like you see some of the decisions they make in Star Wars because there's like zero G sequences in this where they're like floating and stuff. And like you notice like there is a, a spe- there, oh check out the robot dog. Oh. There there are like very specific um it shits a battery out. <laughs> <laughs> there's like real specific Oh, I love that. It's thing. it's a I chimp in a costume. It's a chimpanzee what? in that costume. I love chimpanzees and <laughs> robot dogs. But this is the winner. Like, as I, when I was a kid, this is, like, what everybody remembered. This is what everybody talked about. You know, this, like, cute little robot dog. That's what everybody wanted. Like, uh, you know, I, I could see in sort of, like, a Jump the Shark way where they'd be like, okay, season two, it's just the kid and the dog. <laughs> you yeah. know, you're all fired. You're right. <laughs> That's... Holy shit, you're right, Tom. <laughs> Looking at, the like, the, the kid's look and, like, the uh, the robot... It, yeah, it's everyone else soon. is to, fucking to expendable. <laughs> yeah, everybody else goes out the airlock, <laughs> and you got you know the kid with the salad bowl haircut and, and, and the robot dog. They're, that's the show. Coming soon, to ABC. Uh, boxy and and uh, what's the uh, robot? Uh, boxy and Muffet. Bo- boxy and Muffet. They're uh, Tony and Angela adopt Boxy <laughs> and Muffet. <laughs> The dry cleaning bill on that <laughs> suit. I can right. only imagine. It's just got filled with shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is shit coming out the eyeballs of that? Um, yeah, you see the, 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 <laughs> the robot dogs going like this. I thought you meant no, there's like windshield, no, windshield wipers, wipers on the, sh- yeah, on the eyes. There's all the steam. <laughs> well, the bad thing was, there's like a... Um, Dirk Benedict walks off set because at one point he had to get in, <laughs> in that suit. He's like... I'm gonna be sick in here. Ugh. Yeah, so like Star Wars, it's like, okay, we got, there's no kids, you know, un- until the prequels. That was when it was like, okay, we'll have, a, we'll have a kid and it'll be Darth Vader. But yeah, it's like, so this has kids. And then, um. <laughs> Tony and Angela adopt the Muffet and Box. And, and the then. And becomes the love it. And then they, um, you know, and it's like, there's no zero G in the Star Wars movies. Until The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi oh, kind yeah. of broke with, like, Leia and Zero-G. But, like, in this, you kind of see, like, oh, yeah, Zero-G is... That's, like, a sci-fi thing. That's not a space opera thing. You know, yes. Zero-G. And it's an interesting decision. Um, obviously, like, with The Last Jedi, they broke that. And I'm, I'm trying to remember if, like, any, like, Mandalorian or anything has, like, you know, Zero-G comment. But I, I think it is kind of, like, 
uh, right. you know, either like a non element I, or, or I, kept to a minimum. I think of 2001. Yeah. Yeah, it turns into 2001. And it's almost, you know, because zero G becomes kind of ponderous and it can be beautiful and wonderful, but it kind of like doesn't fit like the fast pace of like a Star Wars movie. But then um, like J.J. Abrams did um, zero G, handled it really well in the Star Trek movies where he kind of made like high velocity, you yeah, know, zero G where it was that, like kind of fast awesome. and fun. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I think I want to rewatch this. Yeah. The, um... the Star Treks. I remember when I saw the the original J.J. Abrams Star Trek in the theater. It was the big thing was uh, it was Chris Hemsworth was in there. Yeah. And when I was seeing it, there like, some people were like, "Hey, that's gonna be that's Thor." He's uh -huh. it was like before yeah. the Thor. Or like, yeah, because Chris Hemsworth, it's like you didn't know Chris Pines and you didn't know Chris Hemsworth, so Chris Hemsworth shows up, and like you think you're seeing Captain Kirk, but then it turns out it's Captain Kirk's dad because, like. How are you supposed to know the difference between Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, you know, seeing them for the first, first time. time? Smokes? I thought for a second it was coming out of his, like, ears. <laughs> oh, <or> like... <laughs> this is this is where, like, she's what, and then she puts the, the liquid nitrogen, <laughs> presses the liquid nitrogen button to, like... His move. tie rolls up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's, like, pulls his car off, the steam shoots out. You know, it's the 70s, and so it's like, you got cheesecake. But they also have beefcake because there's like a, a, an episode a couple after this where they have this like game. I think it's called like uh, Pyramid Ball or something. It's like this game <laughs> where they're dressed in like the um, American Gladiator outfits. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and, and it's this like triangular uh, version of like, uh, I don't know, lacrosse or something. Oh, or cool. Mixed with basketball. <laughs> she like stuck the cigar in his mouth. It's like Maron, <laughs> this purse, the dollars. It's like the little the silk same, purse. This, if this was this anybody else's else wedding, sweet the tomato. <laughs> um, launch tubes. You know all this like phallic <laughs> symbology. You have to launch. She's checking well, out the after, launch tubes and see. After he was talking, <laughs> <to her. laughs> she's like that son of a bitch. <laughs> After um, after he was spying on me in my space lingerie, look. <laughs> he's like sweet. The <laughs> after he like um, after she left him by that ship with put that cigar in his mouth, he's like they're like, what do you have to go next? And he's like, I've got to go uh, polish the uh, bar barrel on my blaster. <laughs> <laughs> and like, check, like check out these glass screens you know these were these pre star like did star the original have yeah star wars had those those were like when they were on, on, at the base on yavin okay but like yeah these do look a lot more like the empire strikes back ones i don't know if maybe stills of, of empire strikes back got leaked, leaked or whatever um but yeah those those were in star look wars at that hair mm -hmm. that's i i wonder if like there's some reference here, like, if, you know, George Lucas having those, if that's, like, a thing from, like, maybe, like, a submarine, maybe, like, a Cold War thing or a World War II thing. Yeah. I mean, these, like, kind of, like, glass screens with all the right. lo I longitude and latitude lines. And seen them in, like, Hunt for October or something. Yeah, so I wonder if, you know, Star Wars grabbing Ooh. those. Because it's such a cool look. I love it. Well, if anybody needs me, I'll be yeah. <laughs> waxing my yeah. legs. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like, like, this, and that's another thing. It's, like... <laughs> Okay, you gotta have all this sci-fi stuff. You gotta have trumpets. You gotta have like uh, pilots. You got you know space jocks. You know space jockeys and stuff. Um, but then you also have a have to have a spiritual side to it too. So there's like kind of like mysticism in this. And cool. there's even there's even a scene where it's like George Lucas must have been so pissed because it's like if he you know it's like man you guys keep like beating me to the punch and it's gonna look like I'm ripping you off when you know. Uh, but there's like a scene in this where they're in a pyramid and it's like a King Solomon's Mines kind of thing, you know, like, like Raiders, like this, you know, predates Ra Raiders Lost Ark by like a year or something. And they're in this like Egyptian thing and they're trying to figure out what to do. And then Adama has his little medallion and then like the sun reaches a certain point <laughs> and the light bounces off the medallion and then shines a laser like right on. So like, I don't know if it was like just parallel thinking uh, which would have probably made George Lucas super pissed that it's like, oh, that's going to be in my other movie and these assholes are doing it. 
Or if it was like George Lucas saw that and was like, okay, you guys want to rip me off, I'm going to rip you <laughs> off. You know, and then he puts it in Raiders of the Lost Ark. There is this movie called Nate and Hayes. Do you remember that? No. It was, it was a Paramount movie. Nate and Hayes, it has Tommy Lee Jones and uh, uh, Danny Noonan, the guy that played uh, Danny Noonan from Caddyshack. Yeah. And there's a huge bridge, like rope bridge scene. And like, there, I, was, I don't know if this is true or not, but I was reading some like articles and it was like Spielberg wanted that bridge scene for Temple of Doom yeah. and like buried this movie to okay. like... <laughs> he, he used his muscle to kind of Nathan Hayes bury this thing. was like, uh, it's like a pirate movie, mm -hmm. but it had like a bridge like um, well, I action could, set piece. I could see of, how that happened where it's like there's something and it's like moment is due and then somebody beats you to the punch and it's like if you can... If you could stick your giant thumb. <laughs> yeah, that's it. what it, it was. Yeah, that's, yeah, Nathan Hayes, Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> but it had the, the uh, that whole like bridge action. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones, fuck, fuck you, Spielberg. <laughs> I'm never going to be. <laughs> like they wanted him. Like he auditioned for uh, uh, Indiana Jones and got turned down. <laughs> fuck you, Spielberg. <laughs> I'm Emery. You suck my dick. <laughs> Al Gore was my college roommate. roommate. Uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. I know I'm, I look like, I, I talk like uh, I'm a real redneck, but I'm a, a Harvard grad here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> I'm all hat, no cattle. I'm all hat, no cattle. I'm a fake cowboy, right? Uh, she was no work sucking dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Nays, he's like. Nate Nays, that was, was going to be my big breakout. My big breakout. You uh, didn't pick me to be Indiana Jones. Right. I go make my own thing and you go fuck that up. I'm, I'm the original road bridge action sequence guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so does that thing exist? Like, that, did that movie ever see the light of oh, day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I'd like to see that scene. There's the space opera, and there's, like, sort of a range of things you can do in space opera, and George Lucas was going about it deliberately, uh, you know, going about it at his pace, you know, a movie every three years or whatever, but then it's like, there's this junky TV show that just needs to keep churning, keep, ch keep you know, bring out, so it's like, of course they're going to step on the same, you know, material. material yeah. yeah, like, Nate Hayes came out, but it was a Paramount, too, but it felt like they were, like, weren't giving it its, like... It didn't go on enough screens or whatever. The, the way yeah. uh, Hearst, uh, you know, squashed uh, uh, Citizen Kane. But, yeah, look, they, they use, like, a special, like, camera screen or, something, like, a special filter or something gorgeous. to make those... Uh, the, that Those little, little highlights on the Cylon armor pop. So that was the toy that I had... That guy sitting in the throne, the imperious leader, and he was a, um, you know, he was this little, this pink uh, lizard guy, you know. Indiana Jones was not, um, I mean, same with Star Wars. It, in terms of material, it wasn't breaking new ground. Like it was, hey, we're doing Flash Gordon was Star Wars, and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was like, hey, we're doing King Solomon's Mines, you know. But it's the execution. It's the uh, variations on the theme that make it so like earth shattering and stuff. So again, it it it's, it wouldn't be a surprise to somebody else saying like, oh, I'm gonna make a, a swashbuckling, uh, you know, serial adventure hero. And 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 yeah, if it's kind of like Indiana Jones, well, I mean, Indiana Jones is kind of like other stuff, you know. Too fair is fair. And with this, it's the same thing. It's like okay, yeah, we're we're doing a space opera. You know? And uh, Glenn Larson's counter argument was kind of like this that this show had been in production for a while before Star Wars it the it, and and it it was called like Adam's Ark and it had like a lot of the elements but you can kind of picture what it would have looked like coming out before Star Wars you know if it had come out you know cuz I think it was like late 60s so it would have looked like Star Trek yeah. you know that would have been the uh, the reference or or Lost in Space or something but then it's like okay I got this script that I've been working on since the 60s. Now it's 1979. What's it going to look like? It's going to look like Star Wars. It's going to look like, you know, the new kid on the block, you know. How did you're Yeah, those plus, those like plus, plus signs, signs that go, yeah. Like I draw those in 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 comics. It you know? brings a tear to my eye. Yeah, very 70s. And, and and then when there's explosions and pyrotechnics with whatever that camera filter is, then you get like a million of these like little plus signs, you know, streaming around. Very cool. But yeah, look, look oh, at this. Video. It's like, uh, awesome. two, it's like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you know, kind of <laughs> lighting. Yeah, because again, you have like, you have like people who've been working, you know, cinematographers who've been working 
since like the golden age bringing all this stuff and then and then and then they die that that whole generation kind of dies out a couple of years or, or like retires out a couple of years after that and then it's like you're starting from scratch and the, and the movies kind of look like shit for a, for a while it's a shame that like there's craftsmen and there's artisans mm-hmm. like it's pro- it's everyone yeah, like you they, think of, you think of that whenever like somebody dies, dying. like like you know, like a David Bowie or somebody, where it's like they have this like lifetime of like this like amazing art and craft that they've developed this these like skills, this body of knowledge that's just gone, gone. yeah, you know, lost and 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 it, and and on the larger scale, it happens sort of you know generationally. Yeah, like when they say they don't make them like they used to, it's just kind of, that's just kind of how things go, you know. Time marches on and and new styles are developed and then and then those become sort of polished and refined and and uh you know become like the new aesthetic you know i like the, the smoke but all yeah you know, all this smoke like you know you just don't like that's you know that probably violates health standards like whatever that <laughs> that gas is that they're like it looks beautiful on film and you don't really see it too much these days you'll see like a digital version of it or something that doesn't quite communicate you know. or whatever 70s blend of like the costume that he's got on it's like hyper flat you got yeah very a little flammable like, yeah, very, he's like <laughs> yeah and and so you got like all, all the gases that they're shooting in there that are really, and then and then all the hair product that probably you know uh you know you lose brain cells from it yeah definitely like the filming had to be set back and, and then the people in masks and stuff you know who can't breathe <laughs> they're like i'm getting a lot of oxygen in my brain uh, benedict like the set burned down because his trailer was full of like hairspray. Yeah, plus he's smoking a stogie. There's probably there's probably been like you know Michael Jackson level <laughs> fires you know, uh, do- during this production. Just, he's like, for some reason he's wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs his crotch and that catches fire too. And he's like, I shouldn't have spilled gasoline on my groin. Mm. I was fueling up. And it's it's. You know, it's a different culture. You know, we're in another universe, so what? they have different words. They say Felder carb and frack, and uh, their money is triangular or square. It's not a circle, you know. Why would you assume money would be a circle? They money were in Studio 55. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Studio 2054. <laughs> and it shows some. He's like, well, if you excuse me for one second, he snorts a gigantic line of coke off the table. Matt, you know what episode I can't <laughs> wait for you to see? I mean, we're going to have to end this episode because the episode's going long, but I want to just keep watching this with oh, you because it's yes. like... So, but, okay, you're going to see, you know, the the sort of space version of the Supremes uh, or like the space version of Donna Summer, maybe, but like three Donna Summers, and but with multiple mouths. And one of the mouths... Is like a tube in throat singing. It's a <laughs> and it cracks all the glass. Oh my in the God. But there's like, th- like they try like, they, they they said they kind of had to like produce this thing at such a speed, uh, you know, just to like hit their deadlines. That like some of the stories are kind of insane. And there's like, there's like an episode where they go to like a medieval planet where it's oh, all like shit, knights cool. and wizards and stuff. So a lot of, lot of treats that's, in store for you. With wait, this. there's. That that kid's like already eyeing. He's like, can't wait till this guy gets booted off the show. <laughs> yeah, it becomes just me, me and my my robot dog. Like Glenn Larson, he's he pivots. He's like, okay, we're done with this. Let me let me take that uh, that Cylon <laughs> technology. Let me stick it in the front of a car and, and put like a, a magnifying lens over it so it like you know looks real big. He's not having any sleepless nights. It's like you know, easy come, easy go. Say <laughs> la vie. There are good lessons here. Like you you always hear about these like filmmakers who are like bring it in under budget, make it as cheap as possible. Because, like, the, this sort of, like, largesse and excess, it's rare, like, when is it ever sustainable? When do you ever... Su- like, even Star Wars, which seemed kind of, like, bulletproof, where they're just dumping, you know, look, they're just dumping uh. buckets and buckets and buckets of cash to make these, like, new Star Wars movies. And then even Star Wars, which seems, like, bulletproof, is, like, okay, those, those movies, yeah, they did good, but they cost a bucket load... Everybody hates them. Uh, you know, I guess we're done making Star Wars movies. You know, like, you just, you know, that kind of large... It's really only in comics that you can sort of have this, like, unlimited, you know, budget or whatever and, and really, like, deliver, you know. It's the, uh, they're like, next up, the, the, uh, sing, they're the, uh, Rocky Dennis's. <laughs> they do look like Rocky, <laughs> like if Rocky Dennis was in a band. Um, and, uh, and also, like, Star Wars did such a great job 
of like avoiding looking dated, looking like the 70s. Like really the haircuts are the only thing, but even those again have become part of like the, the, the uh, space opera genre. Oh, yeah. But like this did not avoid those pitfalls. So uh -huh. like that band is like, it's like, okay, well obviously this can't take place <laughs> in like some prehistoric uh, era because like they're definitely referencing <laughs> 70s, 70s fashions here. He's like, whoa, that's pretty cool special yeah. effect. Love it. That that's like oh. a big part I remembered, and I had like a Battlestar Galactica storybook, which oh, again, nice. these are the things that like carry you through the <laughs> the, the years, uh, you know, when the show's no longer running, and and it was a story, and like one of the still one of the stills in it is like a photo of that of that band. So he, that band and the effects for that band, in my you know memory of things that I saw when I was two years old or one year old, um, it was they were seamless. You know, it was only like watching it as a teenager where it's like, oh, okay, I see how that's done. It's, you know. That, like, oh, look at that. Yeah, the chimp, look at the chimp go in that, in that uh, dog suit. They're like, what, what era is it? They're like, I don't know. And it's just Dirk Bendick's like, one <laughs> like right, this. Yeah. He's, like, <laughs> he's walking with two cans of like space paint. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> you know, the only thing that would make this show better is if they included the commercials. Like, if you could see, like, the bumpers and, and see, like, what was on, you know, the same network. Tom, I still have to look at my parents' house for the, um... The Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Back. Back. The, what was it? It's like, we're getting a transmission from the Galactic Empire. That was a trans it was Gallardi, and he's like, we're getting a transmission from the Galactic <laughs> Empire. <laughs> you know, uh, it, like, every year, Christmas Eve, uh, I watch the um, Star Wars holiday special. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's on YouTube, you know, because um, that was, you know, that was like, that was the big sticking point in, in Lucas's contract when he sold everything to Disney. He's like, that that holiday special, never never seen again. But um, watched it, and, and like the, the version I watch on YouTube has like all the commercials, so it's all like... Love it. And it's, you know, it's also kind of depressing because it's all these commercials about like, you know, cars made in America, and, and <laughs> union, you, you know, uh, uh, look for the union label and like all this kind of stuff. And, and like knowing that like all that, you know, that is a bygone <laughs> era, gonna... you know, um, uh, you know, just as like sort of like a film school thing, take like footage from the whole Battlestar Galactica series and see if you can edit it into like a super cool movie, yes. you know, just, just taking the existing footage. Because you got all the element, like those bug creatures are amazing. amazing. They're they're like straight out of the, um, uh, what was that? that? Uh, the the first men on the moon, or or um, I, I forget what it was, but it was this like um, kind of like George Pal, um, like moon movie, which was very influential to, to to Lucas. But it had these like stop motion animated bug creatures that lived cool. on the moon that were kind of like that, and you know, yeah, because and know, they had like a linguatron, like they kind of had this like crystal. That they would talk into in their sort of like insect language and then it would get like translated into English. You know, we'll have to revisit this when you've like maybe watched the whole yeah. series or whatever. But I, I'm I'm loving it. I'm excited. I can't believe I missed it up until this point. Um I would have liked to have seen it when I was younger. Look at those like storage crates on there. That's kinda like, you know, alien or something. All those like storage crates in space. So they're like space truckers. <laughs> He's like, I want that rope, too. He stands up, his balls are <laughs> yeah. hanging down below the rope. <laughs> they, they got him to join up saying, like, it's, you know, wagon train in space. And then uh, they got, like, another guy to j join up saying, oh, it's, uh, you know, BJ and the Bear in space. You know, it's, I can do that. They're like, don't pull a Ritter. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen Ensign Greenbean yet? I, I haven't seen the high ground. I see uh, uh, Ron Perillo in the background, Horshack. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, Horseshack. Ensign Greenbean, they're like, why do they call you Greenbean? <laughs> With George Lucas, it's kind of like making Star Wars. It's like, how do we keep this from turning into a, um, you know, like a like a trauma film? So how do we keep this from turning into a Corman movie? Because, like, they wanted to make Corman movies, but, like, well-made Corman, like, yeah. uh, uh, Corman, but so you got Scream Queen <laughs> stuff. You know, it's like, how to do you avoid continued. TBC? Look at this. Holy shit. Look at that bridge. That's, that's like, beautiful. Again, like, all these elements. All these, like, um, what's it called? These uh, set pieces, you know? Those bugs. I can't get over how cool they are. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah, you get sort of, like, a sensitive scene with one of those aliens. Or over an hour. Oh we're doing yeah. these, like, epics. <laughs> I mean, uh, again, I part, it. part of it is, uh, uh, what's Matt Damon doing <laughs> in Battlestar Galactica? Part of it is just kind of, like, 
I, I kind of don't want it to end, you know, just because we're watching I it know, as we talk. Great. But yeah, Rick Springfield as Lieutenant Anson Zach Greenbeard. <laughs> Again, didn't see him at all in that episode, but you know, yeah, he's on the cutting room floor. He's contractually, you know, he's in the space locker room and turns around, and Starbucks like, now I know why they call you Ensign Greenbeard. <laughs> 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 like watching this, um, the newer about you know they keep talking about like rebooting the the reboot of. Battlestar Galactica, like getting a new battle, like a third Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. You can see some of the commonalities because it's like, okay, there's this one spaceship that's kind of like modeled after like, like a passenger jet, you know, and so that you know, so you kind of saw that, and then there's one that's kind of modeled after like almost like a cage or whatever, like like a, people are kind of sleeping in like a series of cages, you know. The um, I had put this on to like I'm like okay I'm gonna watch this, and, like I got up and like ate and stuff, and it was and. I didn't even realize she, I, she was in this. Yeah, so what else is she from? Because, uh, like, I, she, she was in something recently. She was in the movie Sneakers. Oh, okay. She's, like, um, in that one. And then Edward James Olmos, I don't know what else he... I, I just remember that name. Oh, okay. Well, he was on Miami Vice. Oh, my he God. Was, he was in Blade Runner. Oh, my God. He was, um, he was in um, that movie. I forget the name. It's, like... Because there were a bunch of, like, inspirational teacher movies oh, yeah. in, like, the late 80s. So there was, like, uh, Dangerous Minds, Stand and Deliver, Stand By Me. Ooh. He was one of the... I think he was Stand and Deliver. He What's was, the like, Robin the math, Williams one? He was the math teacher. I was going to say Mr. Holland's <laughs> Opus, the Richard Dreyfus one. It was Dead Poet Dead Society. Dead Poet Society. He's like, what? <laughs> no, no. Stand on your desks and read poetry. No, no. <laughs> they come into the class, he's shave, shaving his arms down. They, they still got the cool helmets. Yes, the different kind of cool. Like, it looks like the video game Halo. Yeah, Master is Master Chief. This first season is like, it'll just blow your mind. And uh, and like, like, look at the space battles. The space battles are kind of cool. Kind of innovative, a lot of like camera zooms and zoom out. I like that. Which I didn't like when George Lucas did it in Attack of the Clones. It felt like, hey, Star Wars doesn't have, uh, you know, these camera zooms in, zooms out kind of stuff. What's that doing in here? But then in this, it's like, well, this isn't Star Wars, so you can do it here. <laughs> I like the aesthetic of it, too. Yeah, it's like gritty. The comedian <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins said, like, everybody on this show talks like this and he said he just pictures them all having horrible breath because <laughs> it's like dry like, ah, dude what are you saying there's scions out there <laughs> good thing i have my listerine breath strips dude after you mentioned <laughs> yeah. the the guy doing the intro to night rider <laughs> a I... dangerous rope of a man <laughs> Who does not I can't get exist? Out. <sighs> Michael Knight. He's like okay, like uh. he, he's like one of those guys who's like he, he's got to read his and so then he like kind of jogs, it, it, it jogs in place in the studio and then and then when they're like okay you're ready to go and then, and then he starts talking after he's been he's jogging. He's running in place. That um the guy who does the Knight Rider voiceover is on a treadmill yes! as he's doing and it's like on the top setting you know but he's got a submarine sandwich and all the meat and like, yeah. the inside it's flopping out, out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like michael knight and it's like the meat and he's, the he's and stuff. saying his lines through a snorkel he's like the top of the line VO guy, mm -hmm. but he's on vacation in the Bahamas, <laughs> and he refuses to come back. So they have to like, he has to record him while he's snorkeling. I don't know if you remember like Baltar from the the old, but that's the new Baltar. There's the, oh, the that's new Baltar. Baltar, and um, because like the old Baltar is kind of like, um, you know, he would he would play like the decadent Roman in, <laughs> yeah. like, Spartacus or something, you know? He's smoking his, like, cigarillo on the lake. Yeah, this guy, like, he becomes, like, the central character of the show, where Baltar was, in the original Battlestar, was, like, a very arch villain. And he was a villain who would kind you weren't, you know, sometimes you weren't quite sure where he stood. Sometimes it seemed like, you know, he was in this, it's kind of like, you know, Lando with, Darth Vader, where it's like he's in this bad deal that keeps getting worse, and and you kept, you know, he sometimes seemed like, oh, okay, he he he's jumped ship, he's with us now, but he would kind of like waffle back and forth, and so there's elements of that in this character, but this character, like he just, he's like kind of the focus of the series. 
the um, I'm still losing it over their like the way they're talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, this bad bad. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you see like green vapor <laughs> like coming out as they're talking. The aliens are like the halitosi. <laughs> <laughs> He's like this breath can only be treated. Yeah, they, with they're, a they're not from they're, your dentist. <laughs> they're not the silence. They're the certs <laughs> <laughs> with retsin. <laughs> oh my god, I, I thought retsin was like. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to eat the, exclusively the retsin out of this cert. You know, you think about how much, um, like, star, the, the new Star Wars trilogy is, like, borrowed from this Battlestar because it's, like, they have this uh, dry erase board where they have how many humans are, like, their head count of, like, how many humans there are left. And it's, like, something like 50,000 or whatever. And then, like, in an episode, they'll take the dry eraser and then, like, subtract oh, some. No. But then it's, like, they find some humans they didn't know about. And then they, they add, add you know. Think about, like, The Last Jedi where the rebellion gets decimated. And then it's, like, okay, now the entire resistance, entire rebel alliance or the resistance or whatever can now fit Ugh. inside of the Millennium Falcon. You know, that's how many there are left. You know, and that's kind of like, like this where it's, like... You know, things are bleak. Like, it, it took... I mean, again, this... This, like, newer Battlestar Galactica redefined space opera. Like, completely redefined it. And kind of a weird... It, like, and this was, like, the high watermark for it. And people kind of forget, because a lot of people were turned off by the ending to this. I think the ending is great. I'm, I'm on board for the whole thing. But this was one of those shows where some people got so turned off by the ending, they kind of forgot how much they loved the show when it was running. And so there was a time, like, it was so funny to me when this was a current show where it was like, I was like imagining my past self, you know, getting a message from the future <laughs> saying like, oh yeah, uh, uh, Star Wars sucks and Battlestar Galactica is like the greatest thing ever. It's like, oh no, no, you, you've got that confused. It, it's it's, the other, way it's the other way around. But it, like this at this era, Star Wars was cheesy and infantile and stupid and brain dead and Battlestar Galactica was like the the, the intellectual you know the, you're right and it's filling the time between the uh, prequels and the and new, the new yeah the new trilogy so so you'd kind of like ignore what this show did at your own peril if you're doing a Star Wars movie and again like doing a Star Wars movie it's like that's a really tough thing to do and and to pull off and it's like you don't have much to draw from like, if you're making a Western, you have a huge <laughs> body of work to draw on. If you're making a crime show, huge body of work. But, like, a space opera, there's not very much. And, you know, compared to other genres, and there's not very much good to draw on either. So that, that just makes it even, even more of a difficult thing. Four seasons of this, I think. Yeah. I can't believe it's been that... It still looks pretty good. Yeah, this is like, again, you, you don't want to do the math, but it is like, oh, nice. when this came out, oh. uh, you know, the, the original Star Wars was probably more recent than now to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, Unbelievable. Um, when this this came out in, I don't know, like 2000 or something. So, uh, you know, Battle, the original Battlestar Galactica was 20 years prior. Now, we're like 22 years away from this. So there's more distance oh, between now and this than you know, this and the old Battlestar Galactica, which is why, like, um, you know, you hear, like, oh, they're going to reboot this, and you're like, what? Didn't that show just come out? I feel like, like you know. <laughs> we were talking about where's time going. Yes. It's, it's I, like, I feel like time uh, is going by, like, I don't think it's just a matter of, like, you know, oh, we're, we're, you know, we're not kids anymore, and it's going by real fast. I think... It's probably going by super fast for everybody, just because, like, the way we consume information. Yeah, because, like, when I was a kid, it felt like the school year felt so long. Mm -hmm. Summers felt forever. Mm -hmm. Like, you would hear, like, on a... You know, I'd watch, like, a movie or something, and the guy, it'd be like... A character would be like, oh, I've been a cop. It's like an action movie. Yeah. He's like, I've been a cop for eight years. Yes. Or I've been a cop for ten years. It's I'm like, like, wow, he's been a cop for... But it's like... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing comic like I've been doing comics for you know professionally or whatever for like over 20 years you know so it's like <laughs> yes. you know I am a grizzled veteran yes. you know but but yeah like I've been a cop for eight years and and all those all those like 
guys in like cop movies and action movies every single one of them was like in vietnam yeah you know? all the vietnam connection you know? But like, it's like, oh, you know, like every episode of like Magnum P.I. or whatever, it would be like somebody he knew in Vietnam, Vietnam is now coming back in his life or something. And like, yeah, when you're little, you think, or like, someone's like, I'm an expert. Hey, I've been in this for five years. And yeah. I'm like, you guys have been doing this forever. Yeah. I'm like, five years is literally nothing. Yeah, five <laughs> years, you're like, you know, if you're working with somebody who's been at the job for five years, it's like, okay, you don't know shit. Shit, yeah. In the old Battlestar Galactica, um... Uh, they find, like, another, like, counterpart to the Galactica. They find, like, another ship. In, like, a later episode, they find another ship called the Pegasus that's been sort of fighting a similar battle, you know, in another part of space against the Silence that they didn't know, like, they didn't know these these other humans had survived. And so then they kind of join forces, but then they find out it's, like, a little more complicated, that they had a different journey. A similar thing happens in this series, and, and done to, like, amazing effect. Um, uh, but in this... Uh, like, in the other one, I think the captain was, like, I forget who played the captain. Maybe it was, uh, maybe I'm remember, remembering this wrong, but I, I think it might have been Buster Crab, you know, the guy who played Flash Gordon. Oh, yeah. And Buck Rogers uh, in, in, in the old serials. That's another thing, like, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon played by the same guy. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's <know>. awesome. <laughs> so, um, and, and so then in this reboot, they meet the other thing, and, um, it, like the captain of the Pegasus is a woman in this, but originally they wanted to cast Jane Seymour in that role, and she turned it down. And uh, oh no, how great would that have been? That'd been that, awesome. that it's kind of like because it would be the same like because they brought um, Richard Hatch in to go from being, you know, the 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 hero, the plucky hero, uh, to being you know the heel, the heel, you know, from going being the face to the heel, and then a similar thing with her where she's like. You know your, you know your heart is with her and 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 her journey and stuff, and then, you know, now she's you know this kind of like uh, grizzled, you know, her character in this one's coughing all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she's like. So yeah, Jane Seymour never showed like she never she never gets to like bask in the glow of this new you know that's that's your reward for being in the trenches for the original <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. You get to be in the the sort of like classy. Oh, uh, you know, high prestige Battlestar Galactica, the intellectual Battlestar Galactica. So those are the Cylons no. in the one. Pretty cool CGI, but I would have much rather seen some version of like that the dudes suit. in the suit. And uh, you do kind of get to have your cake and eat it too. They there's like a couple episodes that um, are kind of like flashback episodes that they kind of edited into its own sort of standalone movie. But it's like Adama, it's Edward James Olmos's character when he was like a young guy and and the aesthetic starts to look more like the old Battlestar Galactica oh, shit. show and That's then they have awesome. Cylons who are kind of, they're CGI but they're kind of like CGI versions of those uh Glenn Larson <laughs> ones you know man they I mean the CGI you're right it you know it looks good but like man I would have rather seen the person in the suit walking yeah, around but again it's like you know the the CGI was probably a lot cheaper yeah and um <laughs> you know and and like do, do they still have those screens that you put over the ah. over the lens to make the the lights go? You know, uh, Edward James almost he's like they do a a, um, a flashback and his hair becomes like super blue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like they 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 take Richard Hatch's wig from season one of, of Battlestar Galactica and just like lower it right on his head. Richard Hatch in this one he's he comes in, but. Uh, his face isn't as tan as his old self, so he's like, uh, he's got like super like leathery looking but he's just like, he has a chin out here, <laughs> cheek stuff, his nose is like, it looks like Roxanne, like mm -hmm. Steve Martin from Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Aykroyd from, um, Nothing But Trouble. <laughs> yeah. They, um. Does your character always have a dick nose? <laughs> Edward James Olmos, he, he said like. <laughs> When, when he signed on to the show, he said he didn't, didn't want any bug-eyed monsters. He didn't want any, like, like he wants, like, you know, re, you know as, as real sort of sci-fi as you can get. And he said if he does show up on the set one day and there's a bug-eyed monster uh, standing in front of him, he's, he's just going to go, oh, and, 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 like, pass out. And then they're just going to have to write, like, oh, he had, the next scene is like, oh, he had a heart attack. And, <laughs> I, and, I thought you were saying, he's like, I'm going to fucking walk. <laughs> I'm walking. I mean, basically, yeah, he would just, like, he would just like pretend he's having a heart attack, fall down, 
and then he's like done. Like that. That's all the footage you have, <laughs> and, and you're gonna have to like have the next scene be his funeral. Uh, yeah, his funeral. Yeah. If I walk on this set, I see one bug-eyed monster. And he said it got close because, like, in the later season, they kind of have like the um, Tom Cruise uh, um, Minority Report, like, uh, uh, sort of like people in water with like headphones. They they kind of start having that kind of thing. Uh, people floating in water, like speaking nonsense. And he said, "Okay, that that was close. That was a close yeah. one. I was close to walking, but the Cylons were created by man. They rebelled. Yeah, that was another thing. Again, like I'm kind of. This is kind of like reminding me how I kind of took some notes from this show, this new Battlestar Galactica, and kind of fed them into my like Transformers versus GI Joe. But like, oh, they, yeah, they changed it so it's like instead of there being some second this like set of aliens called the Cylons who create these robots instead they are uh, or maybe uh, maybe more specifically for, in my case gobots but like it's like hey how about instead of all that kind of hocus pocus how about it's like these are robots that people made that that rebelled and they rebelled against us you know as opposed to them rebelling against these like space I, lizards i know? love it tom but the gobots was my battle star galactica I oh, among other things it was it was a, 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 many there were many elements to it i love it but yeah it just made more sense to me like Oh yeah, why make yet another like Hasbro toy comic about these like things that come from another planet come to Earth? And it's like, oh, what are you doing here? Who are you? instead of that like let's just cut out the middleman and it's like, oh no, like we we make robots here on Earth and and they're pretty sophisticated. So how about the GoBots were made here on Earth? And, um, when I every time I see one of those like Boston Dynamic dogs get yeah. up and move around, <laughs> I'm kind of like thinking like. Mm -hmm. Ready to check out. It's getting close. Uh, I'm We're like... getting close. <laughs> the, like, after this, when this show was on, it really did feel to me like a robot mm -hmm. revolution is imminent. I you know. know. And like... it's the, you know, it's the most pressing, uh, you know, the clear and present danger of our time, you know. I'm like, uh, just when I want a T-800 to crush my skull. <laughs> well, it's some C4. Yeah. Well, that was another, like, thing like because ron moore worked on star trek the next generation for like you know years was kind of unsatisfied with like how some of the things in it played out you know did his best but then it's like okay i spent years on this space opera show and now i really know like i've learned every <laughs> i've learned what works what doesn't work what you add and what you don't add and so he brought it to this so one of the things was like when people are talking about phasers, uh, proton torpedoes and stuff, oh, yeah. like the audience at home does not give a shit. We don't know what that is. It doesn't, it doesn't connect with us. But it's like, he said, if you start calling them nukes, like we get what that is. So like that, that was one, you know, one L. So it's just like sort of adding, like allowing like the audience to connect to this stuff in, in, in like a more visceral way. So having C4 as opposed to like, you know, a Viridian, Even, blah, 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 you know. It, 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 um, you can connect easier. Yeah, it's like, okay, I get it. So you got your spaceships, you got your robots, but then you, you got, got... your explosives. Yeah, you got, you got showers, and you got toilets, and you got, uh, you know, telephones, and, and, you know, all this, like, funky old-school technology that, that we relate to. And, and, yeah, you got nukes, and... and uh, <laughs> there's, there's... He's, like, the space shitter. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like... <laughs> Because it is like, okay, you got all this spacey, high-tech stuff, but then it is, it's kind of like not that different from like, you know, the, the, the spaces Current. that we like live and work in. They're you know, and the society isn't like all these people in like robes and gowns <laughs> and, and making like these, you know, pronouncements. Because cause part, of, uh, part of like space opera, one element was sort of like the, the sword and sandal genre, yeah, you know, like yeah. the biblical epic, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments, like those kind of movies. A lot of it was like that kind of thing and these pronouncements. And it's like, how are we supposed to relate to that? So it's just like, you know, normal people in like business suits, you know, you know, making these decisions and stuff. Nukes. Nuke. Nuke. Nuke, Nuke me. Nuke. <laughs> he's like, she's like, Kane's, br Kane's dead. His brain is on his way. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? At the opening of each episode is like this montage of like quick cuts to like various things that are gonna going to happen in the episode you're gonna watch, 
and, and Ron Moore said he got that from Space 1999, if you've ever seen that show, no. with Martin Landau. It's, it's a pretty cool, pretty funky 70s, uh, you know, sci-fi show, kind of like, you know, Star Trek or whatever. Um, but, like, at the beginning, like, the intro to the episode would be this, like, wah-wah pedal, psychedelic music, and then we'll be like, wow, 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 wow. And you see all these like quick cuts yes. to like all the like flash, like it would give you a seizure basically, but all these quick shots of like scenes in that episode. So, and it's like more than you can take in, but you'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, 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 wow. I like take some LSD. Yeah. You know, you're going to watch Space 19. I'm tripping, man. Well, because I mean, 2001 is, you know, kind of like a reference there, you know, Space 1999. It's not too far. And um, what decade was that one? That was the 70s. 70s. Super cool. You you dig it like that. That okay. You've never watched either Battlestar Galactica. That's your homework. You're watching those. Uh, but then after that, or or maybe concurrent with that, watch Space, Space. 1999. Wow! 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 That what a great combo. That's like, so good. Um, and it got to a point though. Like I I loved this like new Battlestar so much. That like I would like you know cover my eyes when they do because <laughs> the, the I'm like I don't want any spoilers you know like it all happens it's supposed to happen so fast that like you get kind of excited about what's coming up and, and with and, and you don't really have the context for anything to be like a spoiler but I was like no 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 I'm not taking a chance you know and then and then you have um, characters dealing with alcoholism you know and and like you know like I don't I don't remember like you know Captain Kirk. Or any of those, you know, having, like, those kind of issues, you know? No, he's like, um, he's like, drum me in my cabin for some... Cl- or, uh, Klingon ale, ale or something. something. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like, it's, you know, but in this, it's like, okay, it's a bottle. It's got maybe, like, a little, like, some glyphs or whatever. But it's, like, recognizable. It's like, okay, that's alcohol. Uh, that's not, that's not uh, Klingonian, uh, you know. <laughs> Klingonian, Klingonian Astro yeah, Punch. <laughs> Spa. Mm-hmm. Have a little... Klingon, uh, Cl- consulting producer Glenn A. Larson. Oh, we love him. Spock, I need a little drinky yanky here. He's like, there, Daddy needs his cough medicine. There's a um, a lost opportunity. Is I guess he was maybe too busy with with you know some kind of iteration of Baywatch or something. But David Hasselhoff as as one of the. Oh, that'd be great. I guess they didn't want to make it too much of a nostalgia fest. It's like they figured out a role for um, Richard Hatch, you know, and kind of throw him a bone, you know, just like, you know, put the guy out of his misery, <laughs> give him a role on here, and a, and a meaty role, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, in a lot of ways a better role than he played in the original Battlestar. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, it's not like, you know, you know, Dirk Benedict doesn't show up. I, I'm, I'm sure it was mutual. I'm sure he didn't want to revisit this. You know. He wasn't like, fuck you. Oh so, yeah, you've been watching the <laughs> Battlestar Galactica episode of the Total Recall Show. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey, on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. And check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey and see the various comics uh, that I'm currently working on and I've been working on. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. And yeah, we'll we'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Maybe the Toltecs, all the the Mayans, the Egyptians, the Toltecs. <laughs>